So, Richard, what do you hope to achieve on this expedition? Well, like I always hope, um, I hope to get lucky and actually see the creature. That would be absolutely fantastic uh, to actually come face to face with a cryptid and there'd be no ambiguity about it. I'd know it, 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 it would actually exist there. And, and of course, to um, capture it on film. That's always the ultimate goal. But apart from that, to try and get some sort of solid evidence. Hairs, footprints, anything like that. Anything that uh, we could examine scientifically. Maybe hairs with follicles on them that we could uh, give to Lars Thomas and uh, his colleagues to take a look at. Tell us, Richard, in some detail uh, about the three animals that you're going to look for. Firstly, the orang pendek. An upright walking ape, roughly five feet tall, very powerfully built, long strong arms, relatively short legs, said to have a long mane of hair on its head. It walks erect like a man and completely unlike the orangutan, it's almost exclusively terrestrial. It may be related both to the orangutan and to the much larger mainland yeti. Number two, the giant horned snakes, the Kabu people, speak of snakes 10 metres long they refer to as naga which they insist have horns on their head like an ox we know that they are, there are horn snakes, the horn viper, the rhinoceros viper, the gaboon viper and so on but they're all relatively small and of course the horns are modified scales a horned snake of this size would be completely unknown to science so if the reports are accurate we've got a new species there or some sort of strange mutation of the reticulated python Thirdly, the Chigao, a highly aggressive big cat, smaller than a tiger but larger than a leopard. It's supposed to have front legs longer than its back legs, lending it a, a hyena-like sloping profile. It has sandy golden coloured fur, a short stubby tail, a mane-like ruff around the neck, though not so large as that of a lion, and very large canine teeth. Overall it sounds very like a homothere a scimitar tooth cat related to the more familiar saber tooth cats and we know that they lived on the neighbouring island of Java until around 10,000 years ago. There could be a relic population in the jungles of Sumatra. This is your third expedition to Sumatra Richard, how will this one differ to the previous two? This expedition will differ from the previous two in a couple of ways. Firstly we will be concentrating mainly on the lowland jungles uh, the territory of the Kabu people, the original inhabitants of Sumatra. Uh, the modern Sumatrans and the modern Indonesians in general came down from Malaya fairly recently. The original indigenous people of Sumatra, the Kubu, were much taller, much paler, with uh, curlier hair than the other Sumatrans. Uh, we met with them before briefly and their chief, Nilam, who had seen both giant horn snakes and the orang pendek. So we're going to be working with them and they're going to be helping us in the lowland jungles, whereas before we were in the mountainous highland jungles. We will be also spending uh, a few days up at Gunung Tuju, the Lake of Seven Peaks, the uh, lake that's in the extinct volcano in Karinchi National Park. Both areas um, have produced orang pendek sightings recently. Tell us a little bit about the other members of the team. Apart from myself, uh, we have Adam Davis, whose idea this expedition was. He's an old friend of mine. He works for the Home Office interviewing people. Uh, he's a very experienced cryptozoologist and he's been on very many expeditions around the world. The, the Yeren in China, uh, the Mkele and Bembe in Central Africa, Lake Monsters in Scandinavia, the Almasti last year with myself, and many others. Great guy. Uh, Chris Clark wonderful chap who's been on virtually all of the expeditions this year that have put together and he's uh, also financed a hell of a lot of stuff for us which we're very grateful for. Um, an expedition wouldn't be an expedition if it didn't have Dr Chris Clark on it. He's uh, central to the whole thing. If he didn't come it, wouldn't, it just wouldn't be the same. And last but by no means least we've got Dave Archer who's a relative newcomer. He's a CFZ member. He came to the Caucasus Mountains in Russia with us last year to hunt the Almasty and proved himself to be a very worthy expedition member and we're very glad to have him along. Sorry. Richard, can you tell us what did the first two expeditions to Sumatra achieve? 
well, the first expedition... Which was 2003, wasn't it? That was 2003. That one, um, we went to Gunung Tuju for the first time, which was an amazing place. Nearly died getting up the mountain. And we also talked to Debbie Marta. She's uh, an English woman and a zoologist who's the head of the Indonesian Tiger Conservation Group. And she's seen the creature on four different occasions. We also got to meet our guide, Sahar who's a remarkable man who loads the jungle like the back of his hand. So on that initial expedition we were sort of making the contacts, gathering information, making the contacts and so forth. On the second expedition, expedition number two... That was 2004, I believe. That was 2004, yes. Uh, we went back to Kerinci National Park, but on the advice of Debbie Marta we concentrated on an area called the Lost Valley. This... Um, deep gorge in the jungle that no westerner had ever been down, only a handful of natives had ever been down. And we asked around and found this one old man who in his youth had gone hunting and fishing in this great crevasse and uh, we went through the jungle with him and, and found it, a 500 foot sheer cliffs covered with rattan spines, but we got down there anyway and uh, the basis of the second expedition really was, was going into the Lost Valley. This third one is concentrating mainly on the kaboo and using their knowledge to help us find the creature.